Hey guys, I'm Tyler and welcome back. Today we're gonna build what looks to be like a typical storage box, but it is a boot puller box to hold all of my big old Carolina boots. So the Carolina boots are fantastic, but a common thing among them is they are kind of hard to get on and off, especially these big old waders that I have here. They're fantastic, but I want to get something where I can sit down and put the boots on, something that I can use to pull the boots off my feet and then store them right off the bat without having to put them into another closet. First order of business is to get some rough measurements of where I want the seat to be when I'm going to be putting my boots on and of the boots themselves so I can make the box big enough. Now hindsight is 2020, but I do wish that I made the boot box one inch deeper. It would make it a little bit easier to open and close the door without hitting the boots and having to be kind of careful about the alignment of those boots. I cut up a bunch of three quarter inch scrap plywood to make up the box and assembled that using wood glue and brad nails. The top and the trim for this boot puller is all going to be solid red oak. I have one piece that is one inch and that's going to be for the top so it's a little bit more meaty on the top of that. And the rest of the oak that I have is under an inch. So I'm going to take these thin pieces that are left over from something when we bought the house and I'm going to laminate that to one of these pieces so that I can get that top and the rest of it will be the three quarter inch side trim. So I need to cut these all down to five and three quarters of an inch so that I can get them on my six inch jointer joint everything up, plane it, and then do some lamination and then glue all of those pieces together. Once that lamination had dried, it was back over to the jointer and planer to get the top down to its final thickness. And then I laid out what I thought was the best looking grain pattern and glued the front two pieces together to make the lid that will open and close. The back portion is stationary and this is where the hinge is attached to. And once that glue had set up, it was over to the table saw with the crosscut sled to cut the top down to its final width. I then made my way over to the router table where I used a 45 degree chamfer bit to put a chamfer all along the underside of the lid. This will soften the edge when you go to grab it and it gives it a nice a sleek look when looking at the top from a distance. To match that 45 degree chamfer of the top, all of the horizontal pieces of trim have a 26 degree bevel cut on them. This not only softens the look of the trim, but it looks pretty darn cool. Since this front bottom piece of trim is going to be supporting the hinges of the boot puller front, I wanted it to be nice and sturdy, so I used the beadlock system from Rockler to assemble the front piece of trim into one section and then glued and brad nailed it into place. All the rest of the trim was simply glued and fastened in place with brad nails.
and then to make the boot puller front door. All of these measurements were taken from my boots themselves. They will probably vary a little bit from boot to shoe that you may use. I just marked them in place and then used a one gallon paint can to get a nice radius. Cut out all the boot puller openings with my rigid cordless jigsaw and then glued and brad nailed in the last piece of trim along the top of the boot puller door. I keep a bunch of these little strips of wood around, mostly for mixing up epoxy, but they work great for spacers just like this. I measured where I wanted those hinges to go, and then used a Vix bit to drill some pilot holes and then screwed them into place. The boot puller door is held shut using your typical magnetic hardware for kitchen cabinets and other drawers that you can find at your local home center. Now I am going to be fastening in the top section that is permanent so the hinges can attach to this. This is glued and pocket screwed into place. And I'm using some barn door strap hinges for the top hinge. Fastening the hinges here allows you to sit on the top yet open it up so you can stick your leg in there to pull off your boots. A quick sand through the grits up to 180 grit sandpaper and then it was time to mix up some finish. I am using General Finish's high performance top coat with a little bit of shaker maple water based stain in there to give it some tint to match the rest of the furniture in our living room. And I'm going to be using my Fuji Q5 Platinum HVLP system to put the finish on this boot puller. Now like many of you guys I'm not a huge fan of finish and painting but using an HVLP gun like this sure takes the headache out of it and does make it kind of fun. Once that finish had cured, I added the handle hardware in and put the hinges back on top of the bench and then put it into place and gave it a test. Here you can see how the extra inch of depth on this box would have made it a little bit easier to get the door open and closed with the boots in place and to get them out when you're ready to put them on. If you guys haven't guessed by now, this video has been brought to you by Carolina Shoe, whose work boots are built for work and they are simply the best work boots I have ever owned and I've gone through quite a few of them in my life. They are a little bit stiff at first, but give them some time and the genuine leather will break right in. If you guys would like to get your very own pair, and I would highly recommend them, obviously, go down to the description below and use that link there to be taken over to carolinashoe.com and then use the code DIYTYLERBENCH10 for 10% off your very own pair of work boots or shoes, whatever you would like. Big thanks to Carolina Shoe for sponsoring this video. I'm DIY Tyler, and you guys have a good one.